Welcome everyone to the Proven Knowledge Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Church. I'm a music producer from Northeast Ohio. I began this weekly interview series to give you different perspectives on how to approach a career in the field from different artists, producers, engineers, and other great minds who share their stories on not only what's made them succeed, but also what has shaped them into the people that they are today. I hope you gain some real proven knowledge from the show and that it helps elevate you and your endeavors on your own journey towards success as well. Let's get into it. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to episode 152 here on the Proven Knowledge Podcast. This is the Creator Series. Today, I welcome to another part two guest, the guest from episode 43, mix engineer David Kim. David primarily works with the producer Hip Boy, um, and the last time we talked, King's Disease was the primary topic of discussion in the album by Nas, which has since won a Grammy and has allowed David to be a part of the next three albums that Hit and Nas put together. King's Disease 2 and 3, as well as Magic. So he talked about that experience. He also talked about the rest of the artists he's had the opportunity to work with recently, and a lot of different Korean music scene artists as well. He talked about organizing the first annual AIM Fest that took place in November, the struggles of that, but also the successes that they found doing it, and they're aiming to do it as a annual event uh, over in Korea. And I think just being able to shed light on that, especially after David discussed in the first episode about wanting to help out over there and really just give people an opportunity Um, he also talked about you know the importance of brand partnerships for himself as an engineer um, and how they've been beneficial to his career in general overall you know i'm always happy to tap in with david and what he has going on so without further ado let's get into this one all right welcome everyone to episode 152 here on the proven knowledge podcast This is the Creator Series. Today we have another part two episode, another returning guest. Had this guy back, way back on episode 43. Uh, Incredible mix engineer, got a lot to cover today with him. David Kim, welcome back, man. Pleasure to be here, man. Thank you for having me back. Yeah, no problem. And and for those that, you know, they might not have heard that first episode or maybe they just need a refresher, um, you know, just kind of give that formal introduction again, you know, who are you, what do you do, how long have you been involved in music all that good stuff uh, my name is david young kim i'm a mix engineer from los angeles california and i've been doing this for uh, i'd say like 12 years um professionally mm-hmm. um i think mixing professionally i've been doing it for maybe four or five years but you know i've been in the i've been in the game for about 12 now yeah man and i know i think it was it had to have been spring of 21 is when we first talked. So what do you think has changed the most since, you know, that last conversation? Cause obviously ton of music that you've been a part of since then. So for you, even in maybe not just your career, it could be life too. You know, what, what do you think has been the biggest change over these past couple of years? Um, I think I'm like, I'm hungry for more these days. Um, uh, been getting more to production uh, getting more into education, you know, I, I dropped like uh, a class with Class 101. It's like a mixing, the basics of mixing class. And um, I like, I, I get a lot of satisfaction from like teaching and, and getting feedback from people that have taken or taken my classes or gotten something from um, something I've done. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think like it all comes from, you know, if you, if you mix for a big client, it's it's almost like a, a it's almost like an obligation. It's a, it's a work. It's a job, you know. So after it's done, it's like the the song comes out or the project comes out, and then that's it. But you know, through education, you know, there's there's a you form relationships, and I don't know. It's 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 just like it for lack of a better word, it like fulfills a a certain part of my soul that mm-hmm. that like working on big projects does not yeah you know yeah it's it's cool i think especially now that we have access to you know people all over the world we can help in different ways too and i feel that too because it's like as creatives you can you can do a lot through a song and you can inspire people through music and things like that but there's other forms of doing it too education is always a great thing um and just giving back in that way i know the last time we talked you you discussed, you know, you wanted to do a lot for the Korean music scene as well. You wanted to give back there. And I know 
you did launch uh, Aim Fest, I believe. Uh, so yeah. talk about that a little bit, because that's incredible to see what you've been doing there. How how was that experience uh, this past year? Uh, that was it was crazy. It was one of the most stressful things because you know obviously I'm not an event planner. I don't. Mm-hmm. I've never done something at that scale before, and um, I had a whole team in Korea, but you know I had to. I was the idea man. They would they would look to, look up to me for direction, and I had. To, have certain things in order and, and it was a lot because I had a lot of work also mm-hmm. and um it was uh it was a lesson in balancing you know uh work business versus everything else I was going on I'm married you know I like I like to golf and those are the things that bring me like balance in my life and uh I kind of lost it for a little bit putting that 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 aim fest together mm-hmm. but all in all, it was a pretty amazing experience because um, it turned out better than I could have ever imagined. And um, I think it's going to be an annual thing now, you know. And uh, I got a lot of good feedback from it. A lot of students and, and aspiring artists and, and producers uh, and engineers, they, they said good things about it. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I'm stoked. I'm stoked to see where it's going to go. And, uh, yeah, hopefully this November will be part two and, uh, we can keep it going every year. Yeah. It's incredible, man. And congrats on it too. Cause I didn't know if that had been, if that was the first one or if that was the second one. Cause I didn't remember anything from the year before, but, uh, having that be the first one, that's, that's great. And I definitely hope you guys can pull it off. And I think like, it almost feels when you when you try to plan something like that the first time around, it probably would be the most stressful one. So hopefully, like moving forward, it gets a little smoother. You know what I mean? As far as like the process, and uh, if you plan on you know keeping the same team together too, I think you guys all have a better idea as far as like how to get things running the right way and just more smoothly every single time. So um, it's like you got that first one out of the way. You know, you kind of just got to. But yeah, definitely, definitely great stuff, man. Second one should be easier. Yeah. I hope. Yeah. Because that first one also it's like it's the first um first of its kind in Korea. So it was hard to convince people to like sponsor. So like what is what is it? I'm like, well it's this thing where we're showing how a song is made from beginning to end and we're gonna do it on stage and it's gonna look like a studio and they're just like, uh we don't know if that's going to work or not. And, you know, obviously it works. So, hey, uh, we have something to take back to them now, you know? Yeah, for sure. Hopefully we can get lock in some big sponsors and, and um, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get hit boy out there. Mm. He's been wanting to go to Korea. Um, so I think it'd be a really dope if I can bring him out there. And, uh, and also another thing was we had it on Thursday and Friday and a lot of students, you know, couldn't make it and, Try to, I was gonna say you might have to aim for the weekend. Get yeah, more people it has out to be, there. It has yeah. to be a Saturday Sunday event mm-hmm. for sure. That kind of um, leads me a little bit into another question I had, which is I, I saw recently you did um, kind of a collaboration with Pro Tools, and you did like some some videos and stuff for them. Uh, as far as mm-hmm. like brand partnerships and like finding sponsors, things like that, for you as an engineer, how important has that been? And I assume because of you know, being able to work on a lot of projects, you've had more opportunities. But how has that been recently as far as being able to get your name out there in a different way um, and just to let people know more about what you do? And it could lead to the teaching opportunities you talked about as well, I assume. Yeah, I think the brand partnerships are super important to me. Like those are the relationships that that I want to have um, here on out. And it's not like a yearly thing. It's I. I'm, I'm trying to build relationships with these companies and these people. And, and, um, like Dave Godowski at Isotope, he's like, he's, he's been a huge help because, you know, um, Dave partnered up with plug in the lions and, and native instruments. So Isotope and, and those two companies are under the same umbrella now. And he's like, uh, he's the, he's the artist relationship artist relations guy and uh he's been he's been super helpful in in you know providing whatever i need um mm. to get my workflow tight and you know g girl at, at avid he's been instrumental in that also 
Um, there's a couple other companies, um, local uh, Synchro Arts. They make Vocal Line and Revoice. And then um, I just got linked with uh, the homie from Auto Tune. And I don't know, man. Those those relationships they they've been amazing. Um, also, shout out to Cure Lounge in Korea. Um, through them, I've, I've met a lot of cool people, and they they were like the lead sponsor in Namefest. So uh, yeah, it's 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 amazing to just be able to to try out new plugins and demo stuff, and and um, be lucky enough for them to be like, hey, can you try this mm-hmm. out and see what like who am I to yeah. <laughs> you know? It's, it, yeah. it's cool to to have my re- opinion be respected. Yeah. And it's got to be, that has to be fulfilling in a lot of ways too, because, you know, just getting to that level of where your work is at for them to take notice of it has to be, you know, yeah. such a great thing as well. And, um, you know, as far as your workflow recently has gone, because I assume, like I said before, the workload is probably double, tripled, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. Are you still finding it easy to keep a balance as far as like, you know, your work, your life, all these other things you got going on? Has it still been going, you know, as as usual or you're you're trying to find different ways to make everything coexist i guess yeah i think i've been i've been putting more effort into balance so like i i haven't been working too late mm-hmm. so i try to get here a little earlier than usual and then be done by 7 or 8 p.m instead of going to like midnight uh going home see my wife like playing video games mm-hmm. and you know doing other things than other than working so that when I am locked in, I'm not stressed out and like, and I'm not felt, I'm, I don't feel like it's an obligation so much, you know, it's more of a privilege to, to work on these records. Yeah. And, um, that kind of makes me be more efficient with my time when I'm here too. Cause sometimes like I'll be, I'll be in the studio for 12 hours, but like two, three of those hours, I'll be like YouTubing or, or just chilling. <laughs> yep. But then if I if I minimize the time that I'm here, then I really have to like make it efficient mm-hmm. and, and make that time, you know, uh, worthwhile. So that helped a lot. And, you know, I try, I try to go exercise in the morning, either golf or go play some basketball or or whatever it may be. But um, also I have, I have an assistant. His name is June. He helps me, like, put together sessions and do stands and things like that. So that, that's definitely helped. Mm-hmm. I think people people overlook the having a set schedule like mm-hmm. it's so it helps so much even on just the day to day having like a little bit of um, discipline as far as like the groundwork goes to be like today I got to get this done and I only have like mm-hmm. this amount of time to do it. I think I agree with that because it does hold it holds you accountable. You know what For I mean? Sure. Um, and, and it lets you get the things done that, you know, you got to get done. And it also puts less pressure on you, I feel like, as far as you know that you know you get those things accomplished today now tomorrow we got a new set of goals we got a new set of you know tasks that need to be done so i definitely can can feel that um and as far as because you just mentioned a couple you know hobbies things you do on the side as well i know you have the uh the chipsy hustle account as well for golf uh let's talk talk about that for a bit because i don't think we touched on that last time uh you know your love for golf and just kind of having that other outlet to show people like another side of your personality too, other than just music. Uh, yeah, I think the last time we spoke was when I just picked it up. So I started golf in February, 2021. And I think we had our interview around the spring. You said, yeah. So it was like right after. Yeah. Yeah. I might've been fresh in there, but, um, golf brings me like, um, a change of pace, uh, opportunity to be outside and, and to challenge myself in a way that I can't challenge myself in the studio. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I've, I've been doing this for so long. I kind of know my way around. Like if I, if I need to, if I need to do this, I know how to get to that sound. Or if I need to uh, change something, I know exactly how to do it. But when I'm golfing, it's, it's a completely different monster. Cause I'm, I don't, sometimes I don't know what's wrong with my swing and, and, I might be playing really well yesterday and today I'm completely garbage. Mm-hmm. Like, so it, it provides me an opportunity to like, to constantly be working on something. And like, it, it keeps being like a humble state of mind where it's like, okay, no matter how good you think you are, you're not, 
mm. that good. <laughs> yeah. like, in golf, like, in, like, nobody's nobody's mastered that game, you know, minus uh-huh. like maybe Tiger Woods or something. But even Tiger, you know, got hurt and now he's struggling to make cuts. And mm-hmm. it, no one's no one's an expert at this game. It's like an everyday thing. And you, if you don't work at it, then you fall off. And like the last couple of weeks, I haven't been practicing much and I haven't been playing a lot. So when I do go out on the field, it's like you can see it. I can mm-hmm. feel it right away. Hey, I'm lost in my swing. Like my scores are super high. And yeah, man, it's just a, it's just a great barometer to see where you're at yeah. uh, mentally. Yeah, and it keeps me on my toes, man. Yeah, and it's it's always great to have that you know second thing too to kind of just go and just enjoy yourself. But like you said, it also helps you it's like those lessons from there kind of would help you in music as well. Cause it's kind of the same mm-hmm. deal. It's like when you continue to show up every day and put the work in, you see the progress. And then once you, if you let it slip a little bit, you're like, okay, I kind of got to get back on it and just keep going and yeah. uh, keep that up. So that's, that's great to hear. And I know I always see on your stories, a lot of golf stuff now. So <laughs> I got to follow the account I though. I, I haven't followed the account yet, but. I try to keep my posting, like, my golf stuff yeah. pretty minimal because, you know, occasionally I'll get to people that's like, oh, you golf, you golf more than you work. And I'm like, that's <laughs> not true. I don't post every time I work. But, yeah. but because of that, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to post too much of my, like, personal life mm-hmm. because I, I think social media is dangerous in a sense that, like, okay, you only show, like, the good parts of your life. Yeah. And, and people might think that that's what your life is, mm-hmm. and it's not. Like, I struggle every day, and, you know, there's there's a lot of things that, that happen that I don't post. So, I'm like, okay, I'm going to minimize, but I'm going to keep it kind of in the middle. You know, keep it pre- pretty professional. Yeah. Uh, once in a while, I'll, I'll, I'll post, like, a go- golf thing or, or whatever, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep people in the in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You can't give away too much. It kind of goes back to uh, keeping the balance too. So between everything, so back on the music side as well. Because God, when we so when we last talked, King's Disease, you know, was up for the Grammy. It was probably like a week because that was the year where the Grammys got pushed back uh, to like yeah. the springtime, and you won for that, right? Out rap album of the year, huge deal. It was Nas's first Grammy, but then. Who would have known? Well, you probably knew, but King's Disease 2, Magic, King's Disease 3, like, just g- give me the rundown, man, because like you said, it, I think you said in the last episode, you know, Nas is one of your favorite artists of all time, so like the yeah. run that's happening now, and it's still like actively going on as we speak, I mean, what's it What's it been like, man, to, to be involved? It's been surreal, bro, like, I think we spoke about it kind of you know, the last time we, we talked too, it's like, I can't, why, how did I get here? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here, but I'm going to make the best of every opportunity, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's amazing to see what Hit and, and Nas are doing every day I go in there. And it's just like, whoa, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> what did y'all do this? You know, what's next? And then it's like, as soon as King's Disease 1 was done, you know, they already had like four songs recorded for the next mm-hmm. one. And then we had the thing ready to go like maybe six months later, but it's like, okay, we can't drop too much, you know? Yeah. And, and then after Kings of these two, it's like, Oh, we're going to name this one magic. It's going to be kind of like for the old Nas fans. Mm-hmm. Like, Whoa, my God. And then it's like Kings of these three. And then, you know, whatever the future holds, but they're still locked in. Mm-hmm. It's, it's so crazy, yeah. man. And I, I remember hitting you up on when King's Disease 2 came out, and I was like, what? what is this? Like, where did this come from? Because it totally threw me, because I think, at least from my perspective as just a fan, I was like, okay, that was cool, because I knew, like, Hit was trying to lock in with more artists and do more albums and full albums, so I didn't honestly see that happening just because Nas didn't seem to me like someone that would do that. But it goes to show kind of the trust that he has with Hit Boy to be like... Yeah we got to keep going because what we have is really like great chemistry and mm-hmm. it really has. Cause I feel like all four projects are just so solid from top to bottom. Um, mm-hmm. And like you said, magic was, that was kind of that uh, older sound as well. And, and hit was able to reinvent that and they got premiere on there and ASAP yeah. Rocky, things like that. So 
uh it's it's been remarkable and i i have heard they're they're still working and i'm definitely looking forward to seeing you know what comes out of it and uh <laughs> it's just it's incredible like to say the least so <laughs> yeah, but... it's been fun man it's been fun to say the least Hey, hope you're enjoying the episode so far. I just wanted to take a quick minute out to let you know how you can become a monthly supporter of the show. So if you click on the show description in your podcast platform, you'll see the words support this podcast toward the bottom and you can follow that link to sign up. You have the options of donating a dollar, five dollars or ten dollars a month and that'll be used towards making the show a better experience for you as the listener. Uh, That means new and exciting guests, giveaways, and a lot more that we can continue to provide for you. So feel free to click that link and check it out or visit anchor.fm backslash proven knowledge backslash support to contribute today. And for now, let's get back into the episode. And what other artists, you know, have you had the opportunity in the past couple years to connect with maybe new artists, uh, either through hit or just, you know, other stuff you got going on, like. Who are some recent people you've been working with that you're excited to, you know, have stuff coming out? I know you got the Avellino album coming out here in a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. So I'm excited to hear that one. You got anybody else? That, pro- that project is amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got really invested in it. It's a really, really good project. And I got, so we got that one. I just, uh, I worked on half of the Cali Uchis album that just dropped uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And then, um, uh, I've been working with the BTS guys on their solo stuff. I've been on uh, the RM solo thing. I've been on the J Hope and the J Cole song, and then uh, uh, Jimin he just dropped an album, and I I got to mix the first song on there. But um, yeah, the relationship with like Korean artists, I, I, I'm I'm kind of focusing on that while not like you know turning my back on working with American artists because yeah. that's 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 who I am, but, um, I'm, I've been having a, like, it's been fun to see the evolution of Korean hip hop more than just Korean pop because K-pop is like what the world knows, mm-hmm. but then Korean hip hop is, is like a genre that's really growing right now. And, um, it's cool to see like, um, a, a country that's, that's reputation is, is so like clean cut, but then, you know, there's still, there's still people that go through things in Korea, mm-hmm. you know, and people expressing that through hip hop. And, and that's kind of like what I fell in love with, um, with hip hop in America when I was young. So it's, it's dope to see, um, the expression and like the creativity of, 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 uh, Korean hip hop these days. And, uh, this chick camo. I've worked, I worked on her debut album, She's super talented. The homie Loopy. Um, I've been involved with uh, a lot more K-pop stuff, but also K-hip-hop stuff. And, and like, you know, the future holds a lot of, you know, there's going to be a lot of work coming out of there. Yeah. I was going to say, even through Aim Fest, like, moving forward, you're going to be able to, like, get, I hopefully you can get some artists to come in and, like, speak and have them a part of it, too. So, I, I I forgot you did the J Hope and J Cole record too because I had saw that that came out. Uh, I didn't. Yeah. I still haven't heard it because I thought you know what I thought. I thought it was part of that uh, Creed Three soundtrack, and I looked and I was uh, like, oh, it's not on here. It must have just been uh, like the same day. So I it, like threw uh, me off because I'm like, oh, I thought it was part of that, but I got to check that collab out because that was interesting to me. So yeah, it's a cool try. Definitely gonna definitely gonna I, give that a listen soon. Yeah, it was interesting because I got that song and it was like, oh yeah, we got a J, J. Cole verse coming up. Like, what? <laughs> I, I love Cole, you know? I was going to say, I, I don't know if Cole has done, I could be wrong, but I don't know if he's done collabs with anyone overseas that mm, much. Not yet. So, oh. it was kind of like a first of its kind type of record too, so. Yup. And when you listen, you'll, you'll, you'll hear, he dropped like a, full 32 and he added backgrounds on the on the hook and everything like i'm like wow like he really he was about it you know yeah because any other artist they might have given you a 16 one you know one track of vocals and 
and call it a day. But like, J- I think J. Cole knew the magnitude of it, and he he really like took it seriously, and I respect him a lot for that. Yeah, it's good to see that he is still doing a lot. I don't know if you know he's because I think he has like a couple more albums lined up, but it'll be interesting yeah. to see you know what he does moving forward. But him just doing his feature run still is just awesome to see for the last like four or five years. So it's definitely <laughs> enlightening. I did want to slide in a new question uh, this week. I haven't asked this one yet, but it's something I've seen pop up in the last few weeks. And I wanted to Mm -hmm. get your take on it from an engineer's perspective as far as, you know, AI, creating songs, all this stuff we're hearing about, you know, could it be making things obsolete? Uh, You know, what is your take on it from, uh, you know, an engineer's perspective? Could it be going into that lane as well as far as like presets for mixing, creating songs like what do you think about it i think i know what you'll say but I, I wanted to get your take on that it's for sure it's for sure going that way and um i see that uh it's gonna make our lives easier and um uh, but it's also gonna put a lot of pressure on like the 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 mix engineers that are just starting out mm-hmm. you know what i mean like you guys are gonna need to step up because <laughs> because with ai like this is what happens with, with any like big wave of technology, you know, like the internet will make certain things obsolete, but will give opportunity to, to make whatever we have better. Mm -hmm. Um, the less time that we need to spend on like, let's, let's just say there's AI software that preps everything for you and gets your mix 80%. And then I can just come in and do 20%. Mm -hmm. I, I can, I can do, I can do so many more mixes in the day. You know, spend 30 minutes on a mix instead of two, three hours, you know, and of course the, the, the other side of it is going to be like, okay, assistant engineers might be obsolete or like the, the lower tier of mix engineers, they might not be needed because people, bedroom producers and bedroom artists are going to be able to mix the stuff by themselves, you know, mm-hmm. but, um, I always look at it as like the top 10% of any, any occupation is going to be is always necessary and the the human element is going to also be important because the human has to tell the ai what to do Mm -hmm. you know or okay what the ai is doing because the ai can't do a to a to z yeah ai might go a to q or s then the human has to take that that final 20 percent you know until until we get to a place where like the ai is really doing you know 100 percent of the work which which i think it's not going to be for a very, very long time. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause you know, like even the, even the uh, text to photo text to video stuff that they have now, you might use AI to help you create a logo, but that logo, you can't f- fine tune details on what the suggestion is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you might get an idea and then you still have to draw it out and, and do exactly what you need for the client. Client's not going to be like, Hey, I just need a, uh, a horse with a crest and then be like, Oh, this is the one. And then use that for everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think that the utilizing the AI is going to be very, very important and understanding that, um, understanding the technology so that you can have it help you instead of replace you. Yeah. I, I completely yeah. agree with that. And I, I, I honestly feel people are too quick to reject things just because they jump to a conclusion. Like you said uh-huh. about, they like, people thinking it's going to completely replace things. It's like slow down and understand it a little bit before you immediately jump to that conclusion. So it's like, I agree with that where it's like, if it can simplify things moving forward, you know, that's, that's a good thing, you know, and finding ways to optimize it. And like you said, the human element's always going to be there regardless. In my opinion, especially in art, it's like, it has to be there for it to be compelling and be where it's supposed to be. So I honestly compared it to, you know, even looking back, cause I, I was too young to remember this, but the time where it moved from like, let's say producing, for example, where there was no computers, you couldn't get a DAW and make a beat. You had to have a drum machine or make it, you know, however else, you know, that was probably the same way. They were like, oh, we can get them on computers. That's going to make us obsolete. You know what I mean? It's not going to, but it's like people still make beats in all kinds of ways on the drum machine, MPC, all that stuff. And they could do it on FL studio and you just have your own methods and just do your own thing. So it's like, it's, you know, if you want to use it, you can use it. If you don't, it's fine. And we'll just see where it goes. You got to let things play themselves out. And uh, like you said, the technology, it's going to continue to advance all the time. That's just how it is. Um, so I appreciate that. Just letting, you know, 
people know more about it too because i think it was kind of something i've seen recently and a lot of people are you know speaking negatively on it i think it's good to get like all sides and just realize it's not that big of a thing you know what i mean like it is it's big as far as the technology goes and being able to utilize it and people should at least give it a chance i think so yeah facts because as soon as you as as soon as you put it in the air that it's going to replace us and blah 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 and i don't like it that's you admitting that you're not going to adjust with the times mm-hmm. or you're not willing to adjust with the times. It's, it's crazy because imagine, imagine that engineers never adjusted with the times and a lot of them did it and they had to, you know, find new jobs yeah. like engineers from the eighties and the seventies that only knew how to work on consoles and tape machines. Those guys, they might've never ever learned pro tools because like, Oh no, they're, this is always going to be around mm-hmm. or, or whatever. Or they felt like they were too old to, to learn it or whatever. But yeah. there's guys that are old that, that can use a tape machine and use Pro Tools. And now they have both tools. Whereas like newer engineers might only know how to use Pro Tools and, and can't even hook up a rig. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like it's more power to the person that adjusts yeah. and the person that pivots. Because now you have two perspectives. You have two tools that you can use for the same thing. You're like double. Yeah. You're doubling your skill set. Essentially, exactly. makes it makes exactly. it ten times better. So I definitely love that. I'll probably ask that to some more people in the future. But that was. I just wanted to get your takes on that because I knew I knew you'd give some good insight. So I appreciate that. Um, yeah, for sure. So do you have anything else you'd like to add? Anything we can look forward to coming up, or anything we should be on you know look out for moving forward for the rest of the year for you? Man, this year I'm just camp. Yeah, Aim Fest for sure in November. Uh, it's going to be in Seoul, Korea. Um, I'm trying to put something together out here in LA similar to it. So we'll, we'll have to see. But um, I'm going to be at NAM on the 13th. So April 13th on the Thursday, I'm going to be doing um, a little panel with McDSP and with engineers. So if, if people are watching this, uh, come check me out. And, um, yeah, this year I'm just, you know, kind of coasting, seeing what, what the future holds for me. But mm-hmm. with those things in mind, the education, you know, bridging the gap between Korean artists and, and the American market, you know. Uh, I also want to open up a discussion for, like, uh, like Korean art or American artists and American producers and American engineers to be able to work with Korean talent. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, if there, I know there's a language barrier, but if there's some way to, to, you know, cross platforms and get people to work on K-pop tracks and get Korean features to be on American songs, like I think that can be, that can be an amazing thing. Yeah. You know, as as like you know, as like cultures are melt are are are, are merging and. I think also I wanted to add that like this is the first time it's cool to be Korean in, in my lifetime because you know you have the success of Parasite and Squid Games and BTS and like all this all this stuff is happening and, and that identity that we grew up trying to hide like we can finally be proud of mm-hmm. and people are thinking of it now so I think it's a cool time to just you know work with each other and and, and uh, emerge sounds and and perspectives and yeah man it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to watch yeah for sure man that's a that's all exciting stuff and i'm looking forward to seeing it all unfold man uh i was gonna say man i was trying to go to nam this year but i found out it was in april i was like i can't go till the summer i can't go uh, out there till why? the summer but, yeah, well I, I got a trip planned but it's in july so i was like oh i'm gonna miss nam because it was in june last year i think uh but they yeah. it was in april this year but yeah man one of these days i'll make it out for sure, um, they kind of messed up. They kind of messed up this year because uh, Coachella is the same weekend. Oh, so they might not have as much attendance potentially. I don't know, but I, I'm going to Coachella weekend one, and I'm like, yo, how did you guys catch on yeah. the same day of the biggest festival? Because Coachella's in what? It's in like in the Amp- Empire area, I think, isn't it? Like it's in uh, like Palm Springs area. Okay, because I knew it wasn't like in LA, like directly in like mm-hmm. town. So, but like two hours away, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, hour and a half. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I hope it goes well, man. I hope Nam is still good for you, and 
Uh, yeah. Man, that's all I have for you today, David. So I, I appreciate it once again. And it was a, it was a great time catching up. And we'll, we'll definitely have to do it again real soon, man. So. Yeah, and anytime, just let me know. Thanks, everyone, for listening today. That was episode 152. We'll be back this time next week. As always, hit the support button on your podcast streaming platform if you'd like to send any funds. And feel free to leave us that five-star rating if you enjoyed today's episode. We'll see you then. Thanks, guys.